Hey everybody, um, it's Carla again, just coming to you with more talks on um, the book of Proverbs. As I discussed with you all earlier, Proverbs is a book on wisdom and correction. It was written by, or believed to have been written by King Solomon, who was a great king, the son of David. Um, known for his wisdom. The story behind his wisdom was that he basically told God that he wanted wisdom and because and I'm well yeah he t basically told God that he wanted wisdom as a result of that God told him that because he desired wisdom he would not only bless him with wisdom, but he would bless him with, you know, riches. And as a result of that, King Solomon was one of the richest and wealthiest kings um, during that time. So much um, so that people came from different parts of the world just to receive um, sound wisdom from him to to hear him speak to hear him talk and uh, I, one of the stories that I love about Solomon was that um, the queen of uh, Sheba came to visit him and upon I mean I, I think it's funny but upon um, witnessing just how wealthy he was she fainted so wisdom is is a blessing proverbs is a very good book if you are seeking to attain wisdom or if you are looking for knowledge you may be lost or maybe a little concerned about the issues of life proverbs is a very very good book and like i said i would recommend highly if you are a novice try reading the Bible out of maybe the New Living Translation or the NIV or the Amplified Bible. They kind of magnify the word or make it a little bit more simple as opposed to the King James. The King James Bible is a very good Bible, but it's kind of hard for people to, to siphon through it and uh, break down. But anyway, today I am going to be reading Proverbs chapter 5 out of the New Living Translation and we'll just go ahead and get started it says in verse 1 my son pay attention to my wisdom listen carefully to my wise counsel then you will show discernment and your lips will express what you've learned okay what you take in is what you will put out all right. Verse three, for the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey and her mouth is smoother than oil, meaning her words. Of, I mean, she knows just what to say to stroke your ego. All right. Just what to say to make you goo goo eyed. All right. Verse four says, but in the end, she is as bitter as poison. As dangerous as a double-edged sword, meaning <laughs> it's not safe, son. Don't, don't do it. Don't do. It. Just don't even go that way. All right. Verse five: Her feet go down to death, meaning nothing good comes from that way. From an immoral woman, her steps lead straight to the grave, or in the Hebrew they call it Sheol. S H E O L. But it leads straight to the grave. Verse 6 says she, for she cares nothing about the path of life. She want what she want when she want it. She don't care about her life. Probably don't care about yours. She likes sinning. It feels good to her. And she can kick it with most people who like doing the things that she likes to do. Okay. It says she staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't realize it. Here again. No forethought, no insight. She's foolish. Verse 7 says, 
So now, my sons, listen to me. Never stray from what I am about to say. Stay away from her. Her or him. For, for you ladies, stay away from these foolish men. For you men, stay away from these foolish women. Ask God to give you discernment and wisdom and insight when you're dealing in different relationships with people. When you're dealing with people, period. Whether it's friendships, uh, family relationships, church relationships, work relationships. Even if it's a romantic one or is about to be a romantic one. Ask God to give you wisdom and discernment. Okay? Don't go near the door of her house, meaning don't, don't think, oh, I can, you know, we just friends. I can go over and sit down and have a cup of tea. No. Don't, see, when you don't put yourself in a compromising situation, you don't have to worry about what you intended to do. Well, I didn't intend to do this, or I didn't intend to do that. I intended for it to go this way. But it didn't go the way you intended. I often heard my grandmother and my, my mother used to say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Because we all intend to do one thing, but we end up doing something else. So what the writer here is saying, to just even avoid, the int just don't go. Just, just don't go. Alright? He says, if you do, you will lose your honor and will lose to merciless people all you have achieved. Just whatever you work for, your reputation, your money, whatever it is, you you will lose it to those to those people. It says strangers will consume your wealth and someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. Now, <coughs> excuse me, when I read this verse, it makes me think about because I've known based off some of the fields I've worked in, I have known some women who. They have been in relationships with people, men too, relationships with um, other individuals, but they have other individuals that they are seeing on the side. And the, the ones that they're seeing on the side, you know, like they're taking their money and um, different things like that from the person they're seeing on the side. And they're using it to lavish on their main partner or... Um, the one that they're actually claiming and the side person is oblivious thinking that yes now don't get me wrong some of the side people know some of us the, they really do they know they just don't care but this is what solomon is warning against all you side people what you've worked hard for what you have achieved what you have earned you you throwing it away you putting it in a in a bag that has holes in it okay Verse 11 says, in the end, you will groan in anguish when disease consumes your body. Okay, talking about sexually transmitted diseases now. Because whoever it is, whoever that man or whoever that woman is, you're not the only one they're having sex with. Okay. Verse 12 says, you will say how I hated discipline. If only I had not ignored all the warnings. Oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructors? I have come to the brink of utter ruin, and now I must face public disgrace. All right, I just know many people who, they hobnob in the dark. And then when things are exposed, they come to the light. Then it's like, I should have listened. I should have, would have, or could have, you know. But at that point, it's a little too late. And like I said... Um, before every lesson that you learn in life does not have to be learned the hard way. Yes, we do have to have our own journeys and we do have to have our own experience, but there's nothing wrong with listening to sound judgment and wisdom, especially when you see people who are prospering the right way, who have obtained wealth the right way, people who Hold on to good health the right way. When they're doing things the right way, there's nothing wrong with listening to sound advice from those people. But you have to be careful and have ask God to give you really, really, really good judgment, especially when you're dealing in this world. Because everything that looks good is not good. Now here, 
they begin to talk about being faithful in your marriage. And the writer goes on to say in verse 15, drink water from your own well. Share your love only with your wife. Okay. Means do not be an adulterer. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your husband. Enjoy what you got going on in your own house. Okay. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone? Why do that? Okay. God gave you a wife. God gave you a husband for you to enjoy your spouse. Why would you take your treasures and just flaunt them abroad with somebody else? Why would you why would you do that? What what was what would be your purpose? Okay? Verse 17 says you should reserve it for yourselves, never share it with strangers. Reserve it for your spouse for you. You don't need to take your business outside your house. You don't need to take your whatever outside of your house. Nobody needs to know what's going on in your bedroom. Nobody needs to know what you look like when you're naked. Nobody but your spouse. Nobody needs to know that but your spouse. God is saying here in verse 18, let your wife be a fountain of blessings for you. Enjoy your spouse. Enjoy your husband. Enjoy your wife. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. Yeah. None of us are going to stay young. You know, our hair is going to gray. Our skin may droop a little. may wrinkle up. Some things may start to sag here and there. But regardless, if that happens, God is still saying, enjoy the wife of your youth. At this point, y'all are growing old together. You have history. Why would you throw that all away for some flimsy woman that you just met two seconds ago? Or some trifling man that you just met five seconds ago? Why would you do that? <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 19 is talking about the value of the wife of your youth. It says... She is a loving deer, a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated, captivated by her love. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? Why do that? It's just not, it's not prudent. It's not fruitful. The Lord has already said that her path is crooked. She is unpredictable. Her ways lead to death. Because if she's doing it with you, you may not possibly be the only one that she's doing it with. And I am i hate to say this, but I have known a lot of women who, they like married men. I know some men who, that's just they like married women. You know? And not only is it damaging for the party that's committing the act, but should it be found out by the spouse, is damaging to the spouse and the relationship. Especially if there is a if there's a if the relationship is solid, if it's a good relationship. Um and I understand people have moments of weakness, but when you have moments of weakness or when things um seem to be going to the left or when there seems to be trouble that is the time to take those things to the Father and allow Him to work on your behalf instead of you stepping outside of your marriage or doing what you know you ought not to do. All right. Verse 21 says, For the Lord sees clearly what a man does. God knows, examining every path he takes. It says, An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. Okay? You're not getting away. I mean, you, you might think you're getting away, but you're not getting away. Verse 23 of, of chapter 5 says, The evil man will die for lack of self-control. Learn to exercise, have some temperance. Okay? Learn to control your faculties. Learn to control your desires and your lusts. And if it's too overwhelming, again, take it to the throne. Take it to God. Let him help you. It says that an evil man will be lost because of his great foolishness. And in regard to that, when we start talking about 
self-control. Learn to exercise self-control. Learn to bring your body under subjection. How do you do that? Through fasting and prayer. Asking God to help you. Um, some things, you know, we are challenged with. Many things, especially um, when we are tempted. There are many things that we are challenged with. But God says that his grace is sufficient and his power is made perfect in our weakness. When we've reached our limitations, we we first of all, we need to be honest with ourselves about our limitations. We need to go to God and be like, okay, I have, I have reached the end of my rope. The only thing I know to do is tie a knot right now and hang on and asking you, Father, to... Take the wheel. You do it for me because at this juncture in my life, <laughs> I am not doing, I cannot, this ain't working for me no more. So, um, having said that, I want to thank you guys for listening, taking the time to, to hear and to receive. Again, if you all have prayer requests, please feel free to email us. The email is lifestyle. 24kt at yahoo.com or you can inbox us on Facebook. My Facebook is Carla Trimble, T R I M B L E, Carla Trimble Campbell, and my husband is Kenar Campbell, and that's C A M P B E L L, like the soup, senior. So that's Keynard Campbell Sr. and Carla Trimble Campbell. Again, if you got prayer requests, email us or you can inbox us. <coughs> Excuse me. If you are studying the word and you have questions and you would like to discuss something, you can again contact us via the email or you can inbox us. We'll be glad to do what we can to explain and if we don't know the answer we'll be happy to study with you to help find the answer so we can get some understanding because God does want us to have understanding so having said that I want you all to keep keep going forward and being brilliant keep striving for excellence in everything that you do live pure meaning Live the way you know Christ would want you to live. Do the best that you can to be the best you that you can be and live 24 karat. You guys be blessed. Love you.